People, they used to say that when they saw him, they remembered the Prophet ﷺ. And the Prophet ﷺ said about him, Oh Allah, I love him. So love him and love those who love him. This hadith is in Bukhari. Hassan radiallahu anhu is one time he's sitting there and his servant brings him drink. And when he was pouring the drink, he dropped it. Of course, this upset the, the Sahabi radiallahu anhu. So immediately he recited this ayah. Those who suppress their anger, those who swallow their anger. Hassan says, I've swallowed my anger. He heard the ayah, he said, okay, I'm not upset any, anymore. The servant continues to recite, he says, nas," And they lovingly forgive people. He says, I forgave you too. Then he, then he recites the end of the ayah, Allah says, Wallahu yuhibbul muhsineen. It is Allah who loves those who excel who excel in their religion, who excel in their consciousness of Allah. He says, go, you're a free man. He set him free. Bukhari rahimahullah narrates that the Prophet ﷺ said, this son of mine is a sayyid, is a leader. And perhaps Allah will use him to reconcile between two large groups of mu'mini. When the Prophet ﷺ heard of his birth, he hurried the place where his daughter gave birth and immediately when he came he said to Sayyidina Ali where is the small one and when they presented it to him the glow in his face mm -hmm. that happiness subhanallah so many things the happiness of the Prophet uh, through all of these uh, difficulties uh, that were happening and uh, you know this is Abu Huraira mm -hmm. where he mentions that one day they were sitting in the lesson and uh, Sayyidina Abu Huraira was conducting the lesson and uh, Sayyidina Hassan came and he sat down and he greeted. And everybody acknowledged him except uh, Sayyidina uh, uh, Abu Huraira who was uh, maybe in deep uh, thoughts of the lesson. And someone said to him, uh, Hassan bin Ali has joined us. So he, he sat up and he said, Assalamu alaikum ya Sayyidi. He said, Assalamu alaikum, O oh, our master. He said, because I heard the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam saying that he is the master of the youth in Jannah. Subhanallah. When Sayyidina Abu Bakr saw uh, Hassan bin Ali, so he took him, he grabbed him, and he picked him up and he hugged him. And he said that, subhanAllah, he looks so much, he looks exactly similar, his features are similar to the Prophet, nothing oh. like his father. Yeah. And Sayyidina Ali was walking beside him, and he began to laugh. So, uh, I mean, you, you can even see the, the, the beauty of this here, that he was loved by the companions. Where the Prophet was going on to the member, and he had him on his shoulders and he said uh, in front of the entire congregation uh, that inshallah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with this grandson of mine Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to save and spare the bloodshed of the Muslims subhanallah in the time of Sayyidina Umar the Muslims were as powerful as ever and majority of those Muslims were Sahaba so there was no penetration and when you look at when these hypocrites when they managed to spouse out was at the time of Sayyidina Uthman because they knew that this was the time to shine this was the time now to attack Sayyidina Uthman was for about 12 and a half years and then Sayyidina Ali for about 4 years, 9 months and then the last, some mentioned 6 some narrations mentioned 7 some narrations mentioned 8 months so it completed the 30 years with Sayyidina Hassan being included hmm. in the rightly guided Khulafa hmm. and uh, in this time his father had left an army behind. And in charge of it was Qais ibn Sa'd. And the army continues. So when they pledged to Al-Hasan, they said, we, we pledged you upon the book of Allah and the sunnah of his messenger and the way of your father. So then he says to them, upon the book of Allah and the sunnah of his messenger, and that is enough. And to fight whomever I fight and make peace with whomever I make peace with. So some pledged and others didn't say, saying, we fear that you're going to make peace. He insisted that you pledge, it's a pledge of obedience. If I fight, you fight with me. And if I make peace, you make peace. So some of them refused and they went to Al-Hussein, the younger brother of Al-Hassan. 
And they said to him, we'll pledge to you. And he tells them, no, by Allah, la wallah, not while Al-Hasan is alive. So they went back and they pledged to Al-Hasan. So then Al-Hasan looked at the affair of Muslims and his heart moved towards making peace. So he sent to Muawiyah. And he asked him for peace and he stipulated. He says, I'll abdicate, I'll leave the Khilafah and make peace but with certain stipulations. So Muawiyah when he saw when he saw this, he sent him a letter that was sealed. And there was nothing else in the letter, it was blank. So Al Hassan asked the messenger, What is this? He told him, and you see the intent of Muawiyah. The messenger tells Al Hassan when he finds it an empty letter and he asks him what is this the messenger tells him Muawiyah says to you put whatever stipulation you want oh, okay. this shows you how much he wanted he wanted the, the general benefit of the ummah so al Hassan writes down the conditions he says that there should be peace and no fighting especially amongst the people of Medina and Hijaz and Iraq to them there is peace and then the second thing is that he distributes the money that was gathered at the time of his father. He can distribute that amongst the poor. And it is said that he had a third stipulation that he put it as a condition that if Muawiyah passes away, that he becomes a Khalifa after him. So Muawiyah agrees to all the conditions and he comes to Al Kufa and Al Hassan and Al Hussein enter the masjid and they pledge to him. And the first to do so was Al Hassan. He pledges to him. And all the people start to pledge to Muawiyah radiallahu anhu. Finally, in the 25th of Rabi' al-Awwal, in the 41st year after the Hijrah, finally the fighting stops and the fitna ends and the Muslims have one Khalifa. In the 49th year after the Hijrah, Muawiyah radiallahu anhu had built roads and places of knowledge. And in the same year, Al-Hasan ibn Ali radiallahu anhu passes away at the age of 47. And there some people fabricate and say that Muawiyah anhu poisoned him. But the question would be, why would he have to wait nine years in order to poison him? He would have done it much sooner. And he himself left and abdicated for Muawiyah. So why would he have to kill him after this? The scholars generally agreed that Al-Hasan anhu was poisoned. And Imam al-Dhahabi says that when he was poisoned, his brother, al Hussein came to him and he said, Oh brother, tell me who gave you this drink. And al Hassan said, Why? So you can kill him? And he said, Yes. Then al Hassan said, I will not tell you anything. If it was the one I expect, then Allah will give him a more severe punishment. Otherwise, I will not accuse an innocent, so he will be killed. So now with the death of al Hassan ibn Ali, Muawiyah starts to consult the people on who should be the Khalifa, the next Khalifa. Because his agreement with Al-Hasan was that if, if Muawiyah passes away, Al-Hasan will become the Khalif. And Allah decrees that Al-Hasan passes away before Muawiyah. So he starts to consult people. And the people of Asham say, we want the next Khalifa to be from Bani Umayyah. And why would they say that? Because since the time of Abu Bakr, until that day, only Bani Umayyah were in charge of Asham. And so the people of Asham wanted someone from Bani Umayyah. Because at first, Muawiyah radiallahu anhu was, was the governor of Dimashq only, just Damascus. And Jordan and Palestine and Halab and Hims, all of them had a separate governor. But then Umar radiallahu anhu saw the ability of Muawiyah. So he gathered all of Asham under him. So the people of Asham suggested Marwan ibn al-Hakam and Yazid ibn Muawiyah. So most of the people wanted those two. But then the Banu, Banu Umayyah started to lean towards Yazid, the son of Muawiyah. So then Muawiyah radiallahu anhu announced to let everyone know that they're, going, that they're giving consultation on who should be the next Khalifa. And they all agreed. They agreed to Yazid being the Khalifa. And then they sent to Egypt and other places. And all of them did not oppose the idea that Yazid should be the next Khalifa. So he sent to Medina and there was great opposition in Medina. In particular, al Hussein ibn Ali and Abdullah ibn Zubair and Abdullah ibn Abbas and Abdullah ibn Umar and Abdurrahman ibn Abi Bakr. Abdurrahman ibn Bakr was more upset than anyone else. But in the 51st year after the Hijrah, Muawiyah goes out to Hajj 
and he reads out, he proclaims to people that Yazid is to be the next Khalifa and no one opposed except for those five Al Hussein ibn Ali and Abdullah ibn Zubair and Abdullah ibn Abbas Abdullah ibn Umar and Abdul Rahman ibn Abi Bakr everyone else agreed and all of the corners of the Ummah agreed at that time so Mu'awiyah radiallahu anhu left them alone because only five disagreed five out of the whole and compared to the rest of the Ummah it's nothing Yes, it did go from father to son and even if he made this condition, there was no fault in making that condition because you are the best candidate for that position at this moment. And subhanAllah, you find, unfortunately, we have people who speak against Sayyidina Muawiyah and history is just a few things that has been mentioned of the past. Many small, small details and, and happenings we do not know of. And obviously, uh, they were faced with many challenges and many things happened in their time. But what we need to keep on remembering is that they had the Prophet ﷺ praised them. Uh, they were the people in the time of in the best of times. They were the people that no matter how much you study, they understood Islam. They understood uh, what was needed to be uh, done. You will find that he had so much of respect after that for Sayyidina Hassan and Hussein. He used to send money to the wives of the Prophet. Still when he was the Khalifa, uh, he used to look after the Ahlul Bayt. Uh, he used to give them an annual amount of money, which he used to send to Sayyidina Hassan and Hussein. He did not cause any breach of contract of what was asked of him by Sayyidina Hassan. So we need to take this into consideration. So these were all leaders 